In this video, we're going to look at Glue, an API gateway built by Solo.io. I've gone and deployed an application called the Pet Clinic application to my Kubernetes cluster. And here I'm port forwarding just to show you what the application looks like. You can see it's a pretty simple standard demo application. The first thing that we're going to do is install Glue so that we can expose this application to the outside world. So I've installed GlueCTL, the command line tool for Glue. And so I'm just going to use GlueCTL to perform a standard installation. Um, here I'm providing the enterprise option and, and the license key, but besides that, I'm not really using any uh, custom installation values. This will take a few seconds. It's creating the glue system namespace in my Kubernetes cluster. This is the namespace where all of the glue components are going to be installed. And it's then deploying a number of components uh, to that namespace. If we take a look, we can see there's a number of deployments, a number of pods that were created. Um, and we'll just wait for all of these to start up uh, before we continue on in the demo. It looks like we're close. We are just waiting on Grafana and our API server for our UI. Okay, it looks like we're still waiting on one pod, but I think we've got enough to get going. Um, so if the next thing I'm going to do is open the Glue UI. In this demo, we're just going to use the enterprise dashboard to perform all of our Glue operations. And the CLI comes with a handy command that we can use to um, port forward. Basically, this is another pod that's running in our cluster. So to access it, I'm just going to port forward it. And this is the view of the Glue UI upon initial installation. Um, so the yellow here indicates that we, while Glue is managing an envoy, there's one envoy associated with the Glue control plane. Um, there isn't yet any configuration to send to it. And so we can see that Envoy is in a pending state. Before we create uh, that configuration, we're going to introduce the, the two basic abstractions that you need to understand to really understand what Glue is doing. And the first is called an upstream. An upstream for Glue is essentially just uh, a configuration object that represents a destination for traffic. Um, so for our pet clinic monolithic application, there, there's a single um, pod running in the cluster called pet clinic, and that is the destination that we want to create a route to in order to expose this application to the outside world using Glue. Glue has a built-in discovery mechanism so that we don't actually have to create uh, the upstream configuration object itself. It'll get automatically created as soon as the pet clinic application and Glue are both, are both deployed. And we can see here that Glue has automatically detected um, pet clinic. So it, it's good. It's found the upstream that we want to route traffic to. Uh, and it's also detected everything else on the cluster. It, can look at uh, deployment and service definitions to really understand what possible destinations there might be, just to make it easier to bootstrap uh, an initial glue example. So we can see that, uh, so we actually uh, can, can now, now that the upstream, we verified that it exists, so the next thing that we want to do is create a route to it. And that's where the virtual service abstraction comes in. A virtual service is basically a uh, container of routes uh, that help tell Glue uh, how to configure Envoy for routing traffic to your application. So let's create one, and we'll call it Pet Clinic. And here I'm going to select the domain star. Uh, in a little bit, you'll see where this comes into play. But basically, uh, rather than go through any DNS setup, we're just going to um, uh, use this kind of wildcard match. And I'll create that virtual service. We can see it's created, uh, and there are no routes associated with it. So let's go and create a route. We know that we want to route to our, our kind of default pet clinic upstream. Uh, and in this case, 
we're just trying to expose it through glue. Uh, so we're not really doing any custom matching. We really want any, any, ra any path uh, to this application should match. Uh, so we're just going to use a prefix match of slash. That means any URI uh, will get kind of matched on this route and will be, that request will be forwarded to this upstream destination. So as soon as this is accepted by Glue, and it looks like it already is, uh, we can already navigate uh, to, uh, to this. It's already exposed to the outside world. So let's first go figure out what our uh, URL should be. Glue has a handy CLI command called proxy URL that lets us see uh, what the external facing IP address or URL of our proxy is. This is the IP address of the Envoy that Glue is managing and it is an IP address that is publicly available. In this case, I, I'm running my Kubernetes cluster in, uh, in GKE, and so this was automatically assigned by a, a load balancer in Google Cloud. And we can see, if we look at the services in our, in our Glue system namespace, we can see that this matches the one kind of external IP service, or the one load balancer service we have. It's for the gateway proxy, which is Glue's name for Envoy. So if we navigate to this on any path, we should get to our back to our pet clinic application. I'm going to do that here. And that now we can see um, we are kind of still successfully able to access our application. But in this case, we're routing through Glue. So we're actually hitting uh, an IP address that has been that is externally available. So we have successfully exposed this application using Glue. And as we can see, we, as we navigate around the app and we change this path, uh, we just are always matching on that one rule that we set up for the prefix slash. So that's, that's part one. We can see just how easy it is to deploy an application uh, to the outside world in your Kubernetes cluster through Glue. You simply have to uh, install Glue. It will automatically detect uh, that upstream destination and then you need to create a single route to that upstream. And this would be a, a good jumping off point to start enabling different features like external authentication, rate limiting, and so forth. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of different things you could customize about the routes, but in this demo, we're just going to go th through the basics. Uh, and the second part, we're going to extend our monolithic application with new microservices. But one quick note before we go into that, uh, remember I added the domain star for that wildcard match. That was just so that we could use the IP address here um, to make it easy so we don't have to go into a DNS and actually provide this, um, you know, this DNS mapping or provide a host header. Okay, so for part two, we're going to extend this application. Let's say we uh, want to change the veterinarians tab of this application and you know, we've got additional data that we want to share about each of these vets. Uh, in this case, we'll just use the location. Uh, and maybe in the, you know, this is a vehicle uh, for, you know, a bigger kind of digital transformation that your organization is going through where they're moving away from this monolithic application design. So to modify this page, we're actually just going to break it out uh, into its own microservice uh, and, and just deploy that, that new microservice uh, to actually uh, service this page. And for anything else, we want to just route that request back to our monolith. So I've gone and deployed the Pet Clinic Vets microservice that serves a new version of this page. I've already deployed that to my cluster. So now I just need to create a route to it. We'll go back to the Pet Clinic virtual service, which contains all the routes for the Pet Clinic application. And now we'll add a second route to a new upstream called pet clinic vets. And in this case, the prefix uh, for this page was slash vets.html. So we'll just use slash vets as the prefix here to route to this new upstream. And again, we're not going to customize any headers, query parameters, or anything else about the request, uh, you know, as, as different matching criteria. In our case, we're just really matching on the path. So we'll create that. We can see it's momentarily yellow, but it goes back to green. Uh, that indicates that Glue is kind of processing the change 
and then it accepted it. And we can see that that happened basically instantaneously, um, even kind of round trip between my UI and the cluster, it only took about a second. Um, and if I refresh this page, I can already see that the city um, column is now available in the table. We've updated, we've successfully kind of provided a new implementation of this page. So that shows us how easy it is to start to connect applications that span multiple backends or, uh, or kind of in the glue terminology, multiple destinations for tra traffic or upstreams. Uh, we, and we can connect them all with a single virtual service that essentially informs uh, Envoy which domains and which routes or paths on those domains should get routed to which backends. For the last part, we're going to uh, actually fix a bug in the application. So if we look, uh, I was jumping over it before, but our contact page here is actually broken. Something's gone wrong. And just like before, we don't really want to touch our monolith. It's an expensive, like old legacy piece of tech. Um, so in this case, we're going to actually implement a new version of this page in AWS as a Lambda. And we're going to use Glue just to automatically route to that Lambda. Uh, so before we go into the Glue configuration, uh, the first thing that I need to do is actually create some credentials so that uh, so that Glue will be able to talk to AWS and find the lambdas that I, I will give it access to. So I'll go to the command line, and I've, I've got in my shell uh, my access key and my secret key, so I can use those to create a standard Kubernetes secret. Uh, from those two literals, in our case, um, you know, a secret is a key value map. The key, if Glue finds AWS access key ID and secret access key, this adheres to kind of Glue's expectation. So we'll create that. Alternatively, I could have just created it uh, with an easier Glue CTL command, but I just wanted to show that this is a standard secret. Now that we have the credentials, we can next create an actual upstream representation. So Remember, we need to represent this destination as a possible destination for traffic. And so to do that, we'll create an upstream. There's a number of different types of upstreams that Glue supports. So far in this demo, we've only been looking at Kubernetes upstreams. These are service endpoints in Kubernetes, and they were, in our case, it was automatically discovered by Glue. We could also utilize other um, backends like console. We could use other, utilize other clouds. Uh, for uh, their Lambda implementations like Azure. We could even represent just static upstreams or use the static upstream type um, and manage those in our own way. Um, but here I'm going to create an AWS upstream. And to create that, I need to provide my credentials. And in our case, I'll just point it to the secret I just created. I'm going to call this AWS. We can see it's created, and I'm waiting for this to get accepted. As soon as it does, um, as soon as it is accepted, we should see, oh, and we can see that it now it was. This took a little bit longer because in, in our case here, we're actually uh, going and introspecting our AWS account and seeing which specific functions are available in the Lambda offering. Uh, and we can, say, we can assume that we've gone ahead and deployed the Lambda that fixes our contact page. In this example, we're just going to use contact form three. Now that we've modeled this as a destination, I can go back to my virtual service and I can create a route to it. So again, I'm going to route to an upstream. This time I'm going to pick AWS. And now I have to pick a Lambda function. AWS is really a container holding credentials and access to all these different lambdas. So we'll select contact form three. Uh, and another thing that we're going to turn on for AWS is, is this transform response functionality. And this basically extracts HTML out of the JSON response that Lambda returns. And finally, we're going to uh, update uh, any request going to the contact prefix, which is the prefix for that contact form page. So we'll create this. Um, now the order here matters. I'll, I'll, I'll show you that in, in a second. But we can see that this was created. Now if we go back, oh, takes about 
15, 20 seconds to actually connect to our AWS account. Um, so if we go back to the application, we should now see, okay, that contact form is now accessible. Um, just to go, you know, share that one more time, let's, let's say um, we change the order of the routes, so we'll move our kind of catch-all prefix of slash uh, ahead of vets. That means if we go back to the vets page, we're now seeing the original one. You know, Envoy will try to match on the first, or Envoy will forward the request to the first thing that matches. So we'll move that back down to the bottom, uh, and we should get our updated page. We can see the contact form is working, and now our application is fully up to date. So just to recap, uh, we started with an application deployed to Kubernetes, but not yet exposed to the outside world. The first thing that we did was install Glue Enterprise, and we created a virtual service that had a route for just the slash prefix, uh, and we routed to the upstream that Glue automatically discovered, uh, which was our monolithic pet clinic application. And right away we got that working and exposed through our Google Load Balancer. We then went and extended it and changed the vets page uh, with a new backend by pointing to a different upstream, and we even fixed a bug in the contact form by replacing it with an implementation that's coming from Lambda. Hopefully this was a helpful introduction to Glue. Uh, from here, it could be worth checking out other webinars where we've looked at features like rate limiting and encryption, uh, ways that you might further customize these routes and these upstreams in order to take advantage of all the functionality that Envoy has to offer.